up guys, my name is Jose. This is my 2015 uh, Evo X GSR. Growing up, I was just never into cars. I was just always into sports, played the Need for Speed. I used to have like those video games like in the PSP for with Midnight Club. The way I got into cars is my first car right after high school. I had a clapped out 1995 Honda Civic. It was a four door um, and it was stick shift. So I always made sure I always wanted a stick shift before an automatic. I did a muffler delete to that car. And from there, it just expanded everything. I was like, once I got that muffler delete, I was like, you know what, I wanna get wheels. I got wheels for it. The windows wouldn't roll down. So from there on, I just started watching videos, um, you know, like Low Tech, all these YouTubers, Miguel, um, even Fresh Kicks. So I was like really into them. Um, so that's when I got into the 350Zs. I knew that was my next car. I would see them in the street. Here in, in my city, Whittier, there's so many modified cars to the point where it's like, you, you, they're just, you're just used to them. And at the time I was driving from Whittier all the way to Irvine, so, I didn't want to risk having like a modified car. So what we did, we just bought a, a Nissan Versa zero miles. And I was looking into the 350Z platform because it was just more available for me. Sadly, I jumped into a DE. I didn't jump into the HR. So um, it was just more affordable. I know that the, the, the HRs were about three to $4,000 more. So that's the reason I got the DE. If I had a HR, I'm gonna be real with you. I wouldn't have this Evo now. I would have just boosted that HR, but sadly I had a DE. Um, then I just got, I got tired. I was just into racing with that 350 and it wasn't keeping up with most cars. So um, started exploring the platforms. I know here in the city, there's so many Evo owners. So talked to them, I got their input, you know, what they be, what kind of cars um, they race, you know, the mods and how much it costs and stuff like that. So that's where I decided, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for an Evo. At the time, I actually wanted an Evo 8 or a 9. Um, but again, it's just like, I didn't want the problems. I'm not really tech, like I'm not really smart when it comes to like working on cars, you know what I mean? So I'm not gonna front. Um, I do basic maintenance on this one. So that's where I was just like, you know what, maybe an Evo 10 for me. I test drove an Evo 8. Actually, no, it was an Evo 9 in Corona. They were smoking on the price though. They were wanted 30,000 for a 97,000 mile Evo. So I was just like, damn, like, you know what? No, um, I actually hopped in the car and that's when I, thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? This car's actually too small for me. I'm six feet. Uh, the Evo 10 was just perfect for me. I got an Evo 10. One of my buddies had one. His name's Eric. He actually lives here in the city as well. I got in his Evo 10 and I drove it. His was bone stock and I just fell in love with it. I was like, if this is bone stock, I can just imagine what I could do when it's uh, modified. So looked into different Evos. I actually purchased two Evos before this one and um, they were just giving me problems off the get-go. So I went back to the dealership, took them back. So the good thing is that this one was a one owner. Uh, it only had 29,000 miles when I bought it. It was bone stock. Like you can even see the little marks on the bolts. Like they never modified it. It was just perfect for me. And I remember walking into the dealership with my dad and mind you, my dad hates cars. He's not into them, never was into them. Um, so once we went to the dealership, we seen it. He's like, damn, you're gonna pay $35,000 for a car that looks like a Camry. We got into the car, we test drove it, we got in the highway, did a couple pulls. My dad's like, yeah, no, we're, we're gonna go get it. Kind of like arguing about the price, you know, with the dealer. We didn't want to overpay at the time. So uh, I told my dad, I'm like, look, bro, if we're not getting this one, then that's it. You know, I'm keeping my 350, probably just swapping it or something. And it was funny because we're walking out and the dealer's like, well, I mean, if you guys don't want it, that's perfectly fine. We're not gonna waste our time. There's actually two other people that are gonna come. Then we're walking out and when we're walking out, we seen, I seen a little kid, look like 16, 17, walking in with his dad, you know? And then they were like, oh, we're here to see the Evo 10. And then some older head, I don't know how old he was. He was like fully tatted. He looked older, like at least 30, in his 30s. He's like, well, I'm also here to see the Evo. And then my dad's really stubborn. He's like me, we're both stubborn. So we just, we looked at each other. My dad's like, nah, we're gonna go buy that Evo. Like he thought that the dealership was just lying about the whole situation. So we went in there, got the paperwork. We got the, we got a really good deal. So I got this car bone stock, nothing was done to it, like literally nothing. 350Z was already modified. It was Bolton's E85, it was tuned out of flame map, at everything that if you go to a car meet nowadays, you see all these flame maps. Um, that used to be me sadly, but um, then from there, I was just like, you know what? No, like it, there's no point of having three uh, insurances, paying for three tags. So I ended up selling the Z, kept the Versa as a daily. It was just a perfect daily. Thank God I did that. Once I sold it, I dumped all this money into it. So went full bolt on to 85 within a month. And at the time I wasn't making that much power. It was like 400 horsepower. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was cool. And I was, you know, I was beating on that car for, I was beating on it for about like a year and a half. And then that's where like, it kind of like sparked me. I was like, you know what? 400 is not enough nowadays. I was like, I need to do something else. So I started talking to a couple buddies here that live in Whittier. 
Um, they actually gave me the perfect advice or like, hey, just port your turbo, keep your same setup, just upgrade your, your injectors and you're making 500 all day. Um, and I was just beating everything. Like um, everybody really thought I was stock turbo. I popped my hood and they, would, they wouldn't see anything. So um, three months later, unfortunately, this thing blew up. I actually was racing a Supra. Uh, we were neck to neck and it blew. It was on the side of the road. And, and it sucked because I remember that day in the race where everybody pulled up, um, people were calling me out. And I was just like, you know what, no, the last race I'm gonna have is the Supra. And it was, I jinxed myself that night. I told, them, I told everybody, I was like, this is gonna be my last race with the Evo. I'm actually gonna put it back to stock. So I was stuck on the side of the road at night till like one in the morning. All the people that were there for the race were actually there helping me. So shout out to everybody that night. And I just remember when I was just looking at my motor and I was like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Like, what's next, you know? Like, I don't wanna put another stock, you know, block and then just start from the beginning again. So that's where George just looked at me. He's like, hey, you know what? Uh, Jeff Sivo is actually selling a motor. Um, you know, you're, you'll take a beating on that motor. You can make the power that you want, just grab it. And my eyes lit up. I was like, whoa, like there's just a motor there chilling. Like that's, that's what a, what a perfect timing, you know? So I went home and I talked to my, my pops, you know, he's the one that gives me like the best advice, even though he's not really into cars. Like he genuinely, like he really, really hates cars. Like, um, and I talked to him, I was like, so what should I do? Just do everything you need to do to that Evo, make it fast, keep it. And then from there you, you're stuck with it. You're not gonna be able to sell it. You're not gonna get that re, the resale value. So, um, took me a while. So then the next, the next week I spoke to Jeff, we came up with some numbers. We, um, I went there and I picked up the motor. So within a week, I actually had the, the motor, I had the cams, the head. Um, and then from there, I was just gonna slap it in. So I talked to my boy, Sam, and that's where he came in and started giving me more advice. He told me, he's like, why are you gonna put that motor into this car with the same exact mods that you have and make the same power? He's like, just be patient. He's like, I can actually make more money from you putting the motor in right now and then you buying the mods and then doing more labor. He's like, I'm gonna save you money. Just buy everything up front, bring it to me and I'll do all the work. So we started, talking about the fueling mods, the, um, you know, wastegate mod, like everything, turbo, intercooler, intake, everything that I needed in order to get the power that I wanted to achieve. So I actually went on vacation, I was in Mexico and that's when uh, Sam started doing all my, my work. And then from there on, you strapped it onto the dyno and made some good power, but uh, we didn't actually finish the tune. We couldn't finish the tune because it was knocking on the dyno. So we kind of got scared. Um, then from there on, when it was knocking, we, we couldn't really figure out what it was. So initially it was something so small, so stupid. It was actually a knock sensor. We got the knock sensor, switched it out, put it on the dyno. Once we put it on the dyno, it was perfect. It was set, made some good power. But again, when we started raising the boost, my clutch popped off my motor. Uh, so, I mean, from the trans. So we had to take it down and put the, the clutch back in it. So I have a twin disc, an Exidy twin disc. And so once it popped out, it was just, um, didn't really want to pay for the retune, so I just kept the, the tune that wasn't really fully finished. Um, made really, really good power, but at the same time, I didn't really know my power because I just grabbed my car out of the dyno and I left. Um, I paid Sam, I paid John, and then from there, I s started, you know, doing pulls. I was like, yo, this thing's fast. So I didn't know if it felt fast, you know, just because I haven't driven it for a year or because of the power that it made. my car in the dyno we made some really good numbers some numbers that i was actually surprised i didn't think that i was gonna making that so i thought i was making like high fives low sixes then we strapped it onto the dyno we got my real numbers i was like yo like this is this is insane and then from there i just started racing and that's where i'm at basically with this one so before all the power mods i did try to explore you know the aesthetics i did want carbon so i had a carbon hood at the time carbon trunk aftermarket tail lights and for like the first week or so to me it was it was cool, like, you know what I mean? For flicks, for pictures, for rollers and stuff like that. I loved it, like, it, it was cool. But then I started noticing after quite a while, I was like, you know what, this is not for me, you know? Can't really keep, I don't really wash my car like that. I just, I have it sitting unless it's like, I'm gonna go race or a friend's gonna go race or we're gonna go to a Cars and Coffee. That's the only time I drive this car. So for me to just have the carbon sitting there, I was like, nah, it's not for me. I ended up selling it within a month. I didn't really like the carbon to begin with. I'm making really good power at the moment, but it's still not done. I still need to do my trans. I still need to get an aftermarket ECU. And then from there, just gonna send it. I'm trying to reach at least high nines or maybe a thousand. Thankfully, this motor is capable for over a thousand. Freaks here, I don't really have anything. All I have is just the aftermarket headlights. I have an eBay lip, it's only like a hundred bucks. I don't want to buy a carbon one because I know a lot of people just be breaking theirs. So it's like, 
I'm not gonna dump 700 bucks into a lip and then break it. So I have a eBay lip, just uh, RPF ones, and I think that's basically it. No, no exterior mods. Um, for mods, I do have basically full bolt-ons, E85, um, stock frame turbo, so it is an upgraded um, Garrett turbo. I do have a built head, and then I do have a uh, block from RPM. For the built head, I have plus one intake and exhaust valves. I have GSC S2 cams. For fueling, I have the full radium kit with the double pumper Walbro 450. Uh, fuel lines, um, all that good stuff. And then for the injectors, I have um, ID 2000 CC injectors. Then I have a four inch intercooler, which I'm gonna upgrade that as well. Um, for cooling purposes, I have an aftermarket oil cooler. I have the MAP tubular manifold that fits a sock frame turbo, ETS open dump, ETS test pipe, and then I actually have a Rev9 uh, single cap back exhaust. So it's not really flashy. I like it because like I do, you know, I race for money. Um, I'll do money runs and stuff like that. So when I pop my hood, um, they can't really tell the turbo that I'm on. And um, it just looks so basic. It just looks like a full bolt on Z85 car. You wouldn't think that the power that it's making right now is basically what's in this car. So, um, and then for the interior, I have just, it's fully gutted. Um, only, I mean, I have full weight. I have the passenger seat and I have the rear seats, but when I go race, I just take it off for weight reduction. Because unfortunately here on the 2015s, we actually did not get Recaros. Um, I want Recaros so bad, but the prices are like 1,200 for a set, which to me is kind of stupid, but it's worth it but stupid. Um, I do plan on getting them when the time is right. I mean, for right now, it, these seats, they feel so comfortable. Um, so unfortunately I have basically Camry seats, man. They're not racing seats. They're not anything flashy. Oh, and then for suspension, I do have Fortune Autos with Swift Springs. I think they're the 1400s. I have my boy Jose from General Tires. He actually does all my suspension work. He's the only person I trust when it comes to doing my alignment, doing anything. This is not an ad, just wanna say this is not an ad, but I'm telling you, this guy would bless your car. All right guys, thanks for watching. My name is Jose and this is my uh, 2015 Evo 10 GSR.